All right, Chemistry 111, this video is for you if you are in Group A. If you're in Group A, you know that January 26th was a snow day, and so we missed that day. So we missed the lab drawer check-in, laboratory safety rules, and first day lab tasks. And so I'm going to go over with you what you need to have completed for uh, February 9th, what you've got to have completed for when you come to the lab on February 9th where we're gonna do lab one. So I'm gonna go over that with you. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up the um, inquiry lab manual, which is found on our class's D2L page under the content folder and the lab portion. And you're gonna to wanna to read the first parts of the inquiry lab manual. So if you go to the table of contents, I want you to read all of the safety information and what we're going to focus on right now for the next few minutes in this video is the laboratory notebook and report so you want to make sure that you're ready to go when it comes time to do lab one when you step into the lab and so what you're going to have to have completed when you come to the lab is you need to have your header pre-lab questions reagent table and procedure all completed before you come to the lab and again that is for experiment one, the basic laboratory technique. So let's take a look at that experiment and see if we can uncover what the header is and the pre-lab questions, reagent table, etc. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the lab notebook and what your lab reports will look like. It says here that for a scientific experiment to be valid, your method and results must be properly recorded so that the validity of your results can be inspected later by you or another scientist. So what this means is that your lab book has to be neat enough so that either you at a later date or another scientist would be able to pick up your lab book and be able to interpret the information that's in there. A log of your experiment should be written up in a notebook, making sure to take into account the following points. Let's go through these. Um, you're gonna view your notebook as a journal. You wanna sign and date every page and you wanna be sure to use ink for everything. Either use blue or black ink, don't use any funny colored inks, and don't use pencil in a lab notebook. Every time you write something in the lab, every time you're doing something, you want to record that in your notebook. Every time you make an observe, observation, whether it's normal or unusual, be sure to write it down. If you have any ideas, you want to write those down. Um, if something goes wrong, write it down. If something goes wrong and you think you might know why, be sure to write that down as well. Anyhow, the bottom line is everything that happens in the lab is recorded in the lab notebook. Now, as far as the template goes, the first thing you're gonna need is to have a header. A header is at the top of your lab notebook pages, and that is where you fill in the title of the experiment, your name, the date, the class section, and you have to fill that out on the top of every page. The next part is the pre-lab questions, and the pre-lab questions are found in the experiment in the inquiry lab manual. We're going to take a look at the pre-lab questions for um, the first lab, the basic lab techniques. And then next you have a pre-lab reagent table, which includes hazards. An interesting fact, that's up to you. You can include that if you want, but you don't need to do that. Now, what is a reagent table? A reagent table is a table that lists the chemical formula, molar mass, and the main routes of exposure, and all the toxicity data for all the chemicals being used in the experiment. Um, an excellent source for this information could be the NIST site, ChemSpider, OSHA, NOAA, Wikipedia, or PubChem. So you can use any one of those to find the information about um, all the chemicals that you're going to be using in this lab. Um, next, you have to have a procedure. The procedure will always start on a new page. So it always starts on a new page, even if you only have one word on the page that precedes it, you're gonna start the procedure on a new page. And the way that we write our procedures is in what's called the two column format, where you have your lab notebook page, okay? You have your header information at the top, let's say, and then you write procedure on one side and observations on the other, and you divide the page in two. So on the procedure side, you're gonna list all the steps for the procedure. And again, you have to have this completed before you come to lab. I'm going to check to make sure that you've done this. I'm going to check in the first five minutes to make sure that everybody is ready to go. The observations, you're going to record those in the lab. So I'll talk to, about, talk to you about that more in the lab. 
calculations as well can be done during and after the lab. Then after that, you have a summary and a conclusion, and you have post-lab questions, which I will post to D2L. Now, I know that in the Inquiry Lab Manual, it says that we're doing online submissions. We are not going to be doing online submissions. I will collect your lab report in paper format from you when you come for the next lab. Okay, so just bring it to the lab with you, and I like to grade paper labs that way. Okay, let's turn our attention to our first lab. This is it, Basic Laboratory Techniques. So the questions here are just kind of the questions that we're trying to answer in the five different parts. There's part A, B, C, D, and E to this experiment, okay? Um, and first thing is the pre-lab questions. So these four questions, again, are gonna be answered by you before you come into the lab. You're gonna have them prepared. So here's a scanned page that I have out of a laboratory notebook. So my header is completed. My header is completed, here we go. I have the experiment number, the title, the date, name. There's no lab partner because we work by ourselves. And I put the course section. So you're gonna start, and you can't see the lines here, they didn't come out in my scan, but you're gonna put pre-lab pre questions. And you're gonna answer those pre-lab questions, okay? You're gonna answer question one, question two, question three, and question four. Next, you're gonna have your reagent table. And so after you're done answering the pre-lab questions, obviously I'm not giving you the answers, you're gonna have your reagent table, reagent table, and you're gonna put this in table format. And if you're wondering which chemicals to include in your reagent table, I'll help you out with this one. They're all found in the pre-lab questions. You're gonna include water, ethylene glycol, ethanol. You're also going to include brass, aluminum, lead, iron, and copper. So all of those are gonna be found in your reagent table. And again, what are you gonna include in the reagent table? You're gonna put the chemical formula for each one of those. You're gonna put the molar mass and the main routes of exposure for all of those. Also, be sure to cite the source. And so here I have my table. I didn't use a ruler. You'll want to use a ruler, but you're going to have your water, your water, ethylene, ethylene, glycol, ethanol, brass, copper, zinc, lead, etc. So you want to make sure to have all the um, compounds or elements that I just mentioned a few minutes ago in the reagent table. Next, you're gonna start your procedure. Again, we do it in the two column format where you have your procedure on the left-hand side and your observations on the right-hand side. And there are five parts, part A, B, C, D, and E. It is of paramount importance that you have this completed when you come to the lab, okay? The reason why is because we want you to have read through the procedure and have it ready to go that you, so that you know what you're doing. You are not allowed to bring the inquiry lab manual with you to the lab and use that for your experimental. You're gonna use the experimental that you wrote yourself. So again, if we go back to lab one, basic laboratory techniques, and we go down to part A right here, you're gonna write out the procedure for part A. Then you're gonna write out the procedure for part B. Then you will write the procedure for part C. Then you will write the procedure for Part D, then you will write the procedure for part E. Again, you don't have to write all of this out verbatim. You can write it out in your own words. It just has to be enough information so that you are able to follow it. And if somebody else was to pick up your lab notebook, they would be able to follow it as well. So again, you have to have the pre-lab questions completed, the reagent table completed, and you've got to have your procedure written out and ready to go. Your procedure for all parts, part A, B, C, D, and E.